all right welcome back to another video this one will be a quick one i think we're just gonna do some nice uh nice to have features uh we got the inventory working we pick stuff up we can also drop stuff and lose them from the inventory uh as i said before we want to make it as modular and as uh customizable as possible so we're also going to enable uh physics i guess if we because right now these are hover uh, hovering oh i know what we're gonna do we're gonna do one more thing i mean okay we don't need so you do you do your items the way you want to you could have them set up like this and we could also add Some rotating movement. This is a classic one. Uh, 180. 40, maybe. Or no, not the transition. You could do 180 and 90 and see how that looks. There we go. Classic item rotation seen in many games so we can have that if yeah and so that's one way to do it um we can also we don't want um, i mean we want to have Uh, use okay so let's either we set up okay yeah let's just do a bunch of variables here uh, use physics in the items uh, rotating use rotating movement So let's go into the construction script. If use physics is true, if use physics is true, we're gonna get the rotating movement. Gonna destroy component because <clears throat> I mean if we drop okay maybe not destroy component ah no doesn't matter it can still be there if use physics is true we're gonna get the static mesh and we're gonna set simulate physics so basically the construction script fires before like when constructing the item so you can actually see the change in the editor as well i will show you so if use physics is um true we're also gonna do instances editable and explosive spawn instances editable and explosive spawn and we're gonna get the use rotating movement same and if here we can actually destroy the component so if we don't use rotating moment we destroy the component which is gonna save a tiny 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 little bit of performance so why not actually if it's false it's gonna be false by default so otherwise it's true And one more thing, if we do physics, because right now the uh, static mesh has no collision, right? So we also need to set it to collision enabled, query, and physics, if we're going to use. 
because physics sim physics simulation doesn't work if you don't have collision. So you can see in the editor now, nothing weird going on there. Okay, it didn't work. Uh, I think we need to, it's the pre construct that. You know, do we even have it? Ah, no, it doesn't work. Anyway, fuck it. So if we use physics, you can see that it falls down. This also means by default it doesn't use physics. So but if we enable this by default in our master item. I mean the reason we have this is because you will probably create children of them later. So if we create a child of this, you will have all of these variables here. So you can do different things with different items in your game. I'm just going to delete this for now. But so if we use physics by default, let's say, they will all fall down. I'm going to pick them up if I drop them. But um, they appear. You can see that they fall down here. And one more thing when we drop item, we get our inventory component. On the drop item, we have this target here. So we are going to convert to local variable drop position. We're just going to get the drop position and plug it in. And, and from here, you have the mass get defaults so we can get the defaults from the item that we are spawning and from here we can use the variable use physics if use physics is false we're gonna set the drop position to the position that we have before But if use physics is true, we're gonna get player controller. We're gonna get mouse. No, we're gonna convert mouse location to world space. And we're gonna plug it in there and we're gonna see what happens. One sec, I need to take this. All right, I am back. Sorry, I just got a phone call. Uh, anyway, let's keep going. Um, I don't think that's correct. We need to combine these values somehow, I guess. What happens if we add, add them and make a vector from that? <laughs> Nothing at all. What does it say? Zero, zero, zero. That's not very nice. Uh... 
Uh, why doesn't that work? Why does it say zero zero zero? I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna try to figure this out. There should be a way to, because we want to drop it like where we drop. Okay, so let me pause and figure this out. All right, uh, <clears throat> that did not work out. Um, basically, what we have here is um, so I wanted to the thing is I want to get player controller and I want to get mouse or I want to convert mouse position to local space but the thing is I think this does not work from any component uh, because this always returns zero and the mouse position returns zero and hit under the cursor returns zero so everything seems to return zero from the component it does not from the player character however so we could make a variable in the player character for the mouse and then just send it to this component but that requires logic in the character and we don't want to do that uh, so we're just going to do a workaround instead because I want as little logic as possible in the character. So we're just going to do a workaround. We're going to do like this. Uh, this turns into a long video anyway, even though I said it would be a short one. We're going to do a image. We're going to do three images. Wrapped with a horizontal box. They will be set to fill. And this one will also be set to fill. So there's going to be one. Or all of them are going to be set to fill. So there's now one, two, three. Uh, like that. We're going to have four. Four. So there's four images. We're going to set them all to transparent. We're going to call this one left two. Ah, uh, wait, this doesn't work either. Because I can turn my character. I didn't think about that. Um, <laughs> let me think some more. All right, I am back. <clears throat> I'm sorry to say that I can't figure it out. I think it's uh, I spent I spent like half an hour, and, and I don't have all day, so I'm just gonna finish up the video. Uh, we're just gonna do some small stuff, and I'll return to this later. Maybe I know I know of a way to fix it. But that requires code in the player character or controller, and I don't want to do that. So let's just do like this for now. We're going to delete this. Um, we don't need this. We're going to go ahead and just always spawn it that way. But just to make it a little bit different, we're going to get... Um, world Victor. We're just going to add... Just gonna add another vector. We're gonna split it. Gonna plug this one in instead. And we'll just from the X we'll do random in range. And we'll do random in range from the Y also, but not the Z the height. We'll skip the height and we'll do minimum minus 75. Maximum 75. And here, minimum is at minus 75, and maximum 75. So that should make it spawn in, still in front of the character, but a little bit randomly. Uh, 
and we can what we could do because I want them to fall more randomly. Ah, I guess it's just fine. It looks good still. Does it replicate the physics stuff? It does. Yeah. So that looks all right. And I mean, crosses are weird. It will look better with actually dropping weapons, I guess. What you could do is actually... Um, you could get the gravity and spawn, set it to a random... Random rotation. That would make it fall a little bit funnier. Anyway, let's just do it like this now. Because uh, I don't have... Oh, the... Um, if anybody of you knows a better way to actually get the, because what I want to do is get the uh, get the screen position. I want to like, okay, when I drop this, I want it to be dropped like where I put the the uh, mouse cursor. It's possible to do with logic in the character, but I'm not sure how to get the mouse position from the component because the player controller doesn't seem to return anything from the mouse nodes. Anyway, let's skip that for now, revisit that later to have a little bit of a shorter video this time, and I'll see you in the next one. Let me know if there's any question. Bye!